Well, Israel has approved the construction of 1,100 new homes in the disputed occupied territories. The US Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has described the move as counterproductive to reviving peace talks. Jamie Hyams is a senior policy analyst at the Australia, Israel and Jewish Affairs Council. He's recently returned from a week in Israel. Uh, Jamie Hyams, welcome. Thank you. Now, just a week ago, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu was telling the UN he was serious about efforts to uh, long-lasting peace with the Palestinians. How can he possibly be seen as genuine when we have this announcement today? Well, I guess the important point is that how, how many houses go up in, in a place like Gilo has real no impact on whether there'll be peace or not, because every peace plan that's ever been floated and is generally accepted is that there will be land swaps and Israel will keep certain areas where there are Jewish neighbourhoods and the Palestinians will get land in compensation. Now, Gilo especially is generally regarded in Israel as a suburb of Jerusalem. It's right on the edge of Jerusalem. It's land that was owned by Jews before 1948 on the whole. Um, and it's it, under any, any, any conceivable peace plan, it will stay part of Israel. But there has been um, international condemnation of it, well, for, from um, many, many sectors, uh, from Hillary Clinton, uh, for William Hague saying the settlement expansion was illegal and corrodes trust and undermines the basic principle of land for peace. Saeb Arakat, the chief Palestinian nego negotiator, said the new housing units represented 1,100 no's to the quartet statement. So while, while you're saying it, it doesn't, shouldn't be a big deal in terms of uh, ongoing peace negotiations, there are um, a lot of international figures, uh, not, not just Palestinians, saying that this is a slap in the face for the peace process. Yeah, I understand that, but the interesting thing is that after um, Mahmoud Abbas went to the UN and made his pitch for a Palestinian state, the quartet of the UN, the EU, Russia and the USA came out with a, a plan to get negotiations back on track. And it had certain timetables, uh, which were meant to culminate in a Palestinian state in 2012, at the end of 2012. And nowhere in that statement did it mention anything to do with the settlements or, 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 or building in East Jerusalem. Because basically that's not the main game. The main game is that you work out where the borders are, you work out security, the status of the holy sites in Jerusalem, where the Palestinians are going to have a capital and the rest will fall into place. But they clearly and weren't giving a green light to continued settlements because we can see from the statements from, from like in, in Hillary Clinton today that that was not the intent. Yeah, and, and the, the other point is that these, you know, the settlements haven't actually expanded in terms of the land they take since 2003. All, all growth within settlements has been exactly that, within the boundaries of the settlements. So in terms of the land that the Palestinians are going to get for their state, should peace eventually arise, that's, that's not a factor. So I understand that the international community is, you know, wanting to be seen to be even-handed and is, and is condemning this. But on the other hand, you know, you've got these suburbs of Jerusalem. They are going to stay part of Israel under any conceivable peace plan. People, you know, want to move out of home, want to live near their parents. You know, they, they need somewhere to go. So it's just part of the natural growth of any suburb, the same as we have in Australia. But, but surely with the situation as, as it stands now, so, what, there need to be concessions on both sides. Uh, and th this is this is not a concession. It would have. It is being seen as a provocative move. Well, it is. But you need to bear in mind that you know that since the Oslo Accord started, there has only been one ever halt on Israeli settlement growth. There have been negotiations all the way through. The one halt on Israeli settlement growth within the settlements was in in uh, 2009 when the Netanyahu government initiated a 10-month moratorium on building within, of houses within settlements, specifically because the Palestinians said they wanted that to negotiate. And for the first nine months of the moratorium, there was no negotiations at all. The Palestinians still wouldn't talk. And then the final month, when they finally decided to talk, all they wanted to talk about was extending the moratorium. So Israel has tried that, and it hasn't led to anything. What Israel is saying is that there should be negotiations without preconditions. They should be able to sit down and talk through all the issues. And then once you arrive at a peace plan, then the settlements that are in areas that Israel keeps will stay and the settlements that are outside of those areas mm. will, will be dismantled. And whether there's you know, a, a few hundred or, or a couple of thousand more people living in those areas in the meantime does not make any difference to that. But it obviously makes a lot of difference to the Palestinian people. It's, it's a precondition for them um, sitting down at the table. Well, it is a precondition, but you have to wonder whether the Palestinians are serious about making peace because it, it seems to me that they're clutching at straws, you know, to, to not make peace. And the question is, do they not want to make peace or do they not want to negotiate because they're afraid they're not going to get a good enough deal? Or is the real question 
that they don't want to negotiate because they're concerned that they will get a good enough deal, but then they'll be seen to be the intransigent party because they'll knock it back. Because the heart of the issue isn't the land, it isn't Israel's desire to have a two-state solution because the vast majority of Israelis do want a two-state solution and, and any Israeli government, any conceivable Israeli government is in favour of a two-state solution. The problem is that the Palestinians are yet to accepting Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state. When uh, Barack Obama made a couple of speeches in May, one of the things he said is that the way the peace is going to operate is there'll be a Palestinian state for the Palestinians next to an Israeli state for the Jews and the Palestinians are yet to accept that and until they accept that they can't accept any two-state solution that's put to them. So rather than have something put to them that looks very good and the international community accepts and they reject, they'd rather nothing is put to them. And that's why they keep on styming negotiations by do throwing you, up red herrings such do as you, growth within existing settlements. Do, so. you, do you believe this, uh, this bid for statehood at the UN will inevitably end up being counterproductive? Yeah, it will, because the only way to make peace is for the two sides to sit down together and negotiate and make concessions. If the Palestinians think that they can get what they want without making concessions, then what incentive do they have to do so? But, but the Israelis are hardly making concessions if you're going ahead with settlements. Well, the Israelis are prepared to make what they call painful concessions in terms of giving up you know, up to 95% of the West Bank, all of Gaza, land swaps in exchange. There have been peace plan plans in the past that have allowed a Palestinian capital in East Jerusalem. So they're the sort of concessions, but what the Israelis are saying is you don't get the concessions and then go into the talks, first of all negotiate, and then make the concessions. And what the Palestinians are after is they want Israel to make all the concessions, you know, on, on, in terms of border and, and building within settlements before they're even prepared to talk. OK, uh, the challenges continue there in the Middle East. Jamie Himes, thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much.